Hello, week seven. We're in video lecture two, and we're going to actually start uh, start our work for this week after reviewing a bit uh, where we were and where we're going from here. As usual, let's start with an example. Survey Poo in a Research Center. Young, underemployed, and optimistic. Coming of age slowly in a tough economy. I think this data is from uh, 2012, right after the big uh, economic debacle that we had in 2008. So young adults hit hard by the recession. A plurality of public, 41%, believe a, plur a plurality of the public, 41% in particular, believes young adults rather than middle-aged or older adults are having the toughest time in today's economy. So if I want to know the opinion of the public, of the full public, the full population, I get a sample. And then I say, oh, 41% thinks that adults, young adults are having a harder time than middle-aged and older adults. Another conclusion from that research, tough economic times altering young adults' daily lives and long-term plans. While negative trends in the labor market have been felt most acutely by the youngest workers, many adults in their late 20s and early 30s have also felt the impact of the weak economy. Among all 18 to 34 year olds, fully half, 49%, say they have taken a job they didn't want just to pay the bills with 24% saying that they have taken an unpaid job to gain work experience. So that's another information that we had that we tried to gain about the population through a sample. So the reports that we're making that I just made are based on sample information, right? So there was a general public survey based on telephone interview conducted in um, June 19, 2011, with a nationally representative sample of 2,048 adults, ages 18 and under, living in the continental United States. All right, so I did not sample everybody 18 or older. I mean, the, not me, but <laughs> uh, the researchers did not sample every single adult aged 18 or older. So that's the population of interest, but they sampled a piece of it. And then they say here that the margin of sampling error is plus or minus 2.9 percentage points for results based on the total sample, the first information I gave, and 4.4 percentage points for adults aged 18 to 34 at the 95% confidence level. So what does this mean? Well, let's take this first piece of information, 2.9 percentage points for the results based on the total sample. So that was the first question they asked. Hey everyone, who do you believe are, is the age group suffering most with the recession? And we said that 41% said that they believe young adults are, and we're saying that that, that, that that estimate has a margin of error of 2.9%. So what we can say is that we are 95% confident that 38.1% all the way to 43.9% of the public believe young adults rather than middle-aged or older adults are having the toughest time in the economy. Okay? The idea is that there is some true value in the population that represents what everyone thinks, right? So if we were to measure, get everybody's opinion, we would have a true percentage that believes that young people are suffering most, a true value, all right? And we're saying that through our sample, we estimated a range that we expect contains that true value, right? 
And if we were to estimate, to sample over and over again and estimate that interval over and over again, that interval would contain the true value 95% of the times. That's why we're saying that we're 95% confident that it is between these two values. Now, we also said that when uh, individuals 18 to 34 year olds were interviewed, they responded that 49% 49, 49 of them said that they have taken another job just to get by, just to pay the bills. Not a job they loved, not a job that they were trained for, but a job just to pay the bills. And this here is telling us that there is a margin of error of 4.4 percentage points um, that we can expect in terms of variation. So here we're 95% confident that between 44.6% to 53.4% plus or minus 49 plus or minus 4.4% of this group of individuals have taken a job they did not want just to pay the bills. All right, so that's what confidence intervals do. If I keep sampling from the population over and over again, I will compute an interval every time. I can compute an interval every time. And that interval that I compute will include the true percentage of the, that I would obtain if I were to get everyone's opinion uh, it will contain that true value 95% of the times. So here is the idea one more time with feeling. I got a sample and I have two point estimates in my hand, 41% and 49%. That's what my sample indicates. And I want to use these samples to estimate, to make inferences about the population. So those are sample statistics that I can use to make inferences about the population parameters, the true values of percentage that would represent the opinion of everyone if I were to sample everyone. So those are point estimates, again, sample statistics, these numbers I have in hand for my sample, to represent the population. And as you know, one more time with filling, if I were to sample the population over and over again, get different samples every time, I expect these values to vary a little bit every single time. So let's take the 41%. I'm sampling from the whole group and asking who is suffering most. The first sample gave me 41%. If I were to do another survey with a different sample, maybe it would come out at 43%. If I were to sample again, maybe it would come out as 39%, so on and so forth. So the idea of margin of error is to give us an estimate of how much variation in my sample statistic can I expect based on the variation that I am observing in my sample. All right? So again, margin of error expresses how much we can expect a sample statistic to vary from sample to sample to sample. Now, a few classes ago, I showed you how to get that variation through a random experiment, like running a random experiment over and over again. Today, I'll teach you how to get an estimate of that um, the, of, um, sampling error using something different, using a theorem, central limit theorem so that you don't have to generate these um, random experiments to figure that out, okay? There are, however, conditions under which this theorem applies and conditions under which they don't. So we'll learn all about that today. So today's topic, in a nutshell, we'll take a look, a deeper look into sampling variability, which we've just discussed. When I sample repeatedly, um, I can uh, the, the particular sample statistic that I compute, say the mean, same deviation, the percentage of people that believe something will vary from sample to sample to sample. And we will learn how to use the central limit theorem instead of a random experiment to get an estimate of that sampling variability. And then we'll use uh, the central limit theorem instead of random experiments to work on the idea of statistical inference using both confidence intervals 
and hypothesis test, which are two pillars that we use to look at a sample and make inferences about our population of interest. So the next video, we'll dig into uh, these topics uh, in more detail.